we've reached the point in our service that we observe the Lord's Supper. And this is a practice that Jesus ordained for his followers to do in remembrance of him. We will partake of, a, of bread which represents his body and then we'll drink from a cup which represents Jesus' blood which he poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And to prepare our hearts for this time, we're going to look at a passage of scripture and consider what God is saying to us from this passage. Turn, turn in your Bibles to Matthew 26. And if you don't have a Bible, raise your hand. Some men will be glad to put one in your hand. And if you don't own a Bible, this is a gift to you. We're going to look at a any incident that happens. It occurs in all three in three gospels, but we're going to look at uh, Matthew uh, twenty six verses six through thirteen, and this is uh, something that happened <clears throat> six days before the Passover. Follow along as I read Matthew twenty six verses six through thirteen. Now when Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster vial of very costly perfume, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. But the disciples were indignant when they saw this, and they said, Why this waste? Was this, per this perfume might have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you bother the woman? For she has done a good deed to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. For when she poured this perfume on my body, she did this to prepare my, me for, the, for burial. To, truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be spoken of in memory of her. This woman is Mary, the sister of Martha and, and Lazarus. On a previous occasion, Lazarus had died, and Jesus traveled to the grave and raised him from the dead. On this occasion, Lazarus is reclining at the table with Jesus. What was in Mary's heart that would cause her to uh, take this very expensive perfume and pour it on Jesus' body? The cost of this perfume was, about, uh, was nearly a year's wages. I think maybe we have a, a, a clue from an earlier occasion when, when uh, Jesus was in the home of Martha and Mary. You might remember that Martha was busy preparing the meal while uh, Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet listening to him. She was taking in truth from the very source of truth, getting her soul fed. And Martha comes to Jesus and says, tell my sister to help. And Jesus replied, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things. But only one thing is necessary, for Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Her heart was taking in truth from Jesus, and she knew that he was more than just a mere man. He is the Son of God, and he has the power to raise the dead. This was an act of worship on the part of Mary. Notice the reaction of the, of the disciples to Mary's act. They were indignant, and they said, why this waste? They were thinking about how this expensive perfume could have been given to the poor, but Jesus, Judas was no doubt thinking about how much he could pilfer out of that big sum of money. How did Jesus view this? Did, did he, how did he view the fact that they thought it was a waste? Well, first of all, he defends Mary. He, uh, he says, why do you bother her? And he says, uh, leave her alone. 
And then he explained that she's done a good deed to me. He is uh, welcoming her act as something that is honorable, and it's something that was proper for her to do to him. For Jesus to accept this act of worship would have been blasphemy had he been any less than the Son of God. Jesus is not saying that money shouldn't be given to the poor, but he is saying that you don't have me here forever. Worship me while you do. You have the poor later when I'm gone. She, uh, Mary was preparing Jesus' body for burial, and Jesus welcomes such worship, and he tells his disciples that whatever she has done, whatever she did, will be spoken of her in memory of her wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world. It's interesting that Jesus holds up her example to the whole world as an example of true worship. Mary was offering her worship shortly before Jesus went to the cross. Now, as we partake of the Lord's Supper, we're not offering expensive gifts, but we are remembering the one who died on the cross in our place. The one who, in the only time in his existence, experienced the forsaking by his father as he bore our, sons, our sins on the cross, as he... Uh, suffered for us, he knew what it meant to be separated from God, something that, a, that our sins would have done to us forever had he not done this. He is the God who took on a human body to suffer in our place. And out of his love for us, the Father was willing to inflict the penalty of our sin on his Son, and Jesus was willing to pay the price for our sin, to bring many sons into glory. As we consider the price that he paid, we should consider the appropriateness of our putting away sin, putting to death sin, because he paid such a terrible price for them. It would, it would be a front to him to continue to dabble in these sins. If you happen to be someone who is here and has never received this Savior, we ask that you refrain from taking the Lord's Supper. This is something that Jesus instituted for those who are his. But we would ask you to consider that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And the words of the Apostle John God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. The Son, whoever has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. Do not let your life be consumed by the temporal things of this life. To fail to come to Jesus and to trust in him is to miss the only way that God has provided for you to be saved from sin for you to have be a member of his family. Be sure to visit with someone if you would desire to visit to talk about this with uh, one of the elders or one of the people in this church that you may know. And Christians, you might you may partake of this. Just remember the the value of this savior that that we are honoring and remembering as we partake. When your heart is ready, you may, may partake. Man, come and serve us at this time.